Hi guys, my name is welcome back to my channel, and today I'm bringing to you my Newt Magical Readathon wrap up. August was a month, guys. It was a Newt Magical Readathon, and I was so, so excited to participate. I had a TBR that was massive. I had 15 books on my TBR and that was excluding a book that I was reading before I started the readathon and overall I ended up finishing 10 books during the month so really really good effort. That is nine books that went towards my notes and I I really really enjoyed it. The notes if you do not know is a readathon that G from Book Rose puts on every year. I have been lucky enough to participate in this every round and I absolutely adore it so if you do not know about the notes I will link all of G's information down below so you can join us next year when we sit our owls and our notes again but this was our main one and it was incredible and due to the readathon I'm going to do my wrap ups a little bit differently than I normally do. I'm going to to do it in order of subject rather than my least favorite to my favorite book of the month. Now I know that's that I love doing my wrap ups that way, but we got to change it up this month because there's a lot of books to get through. There's ten to get through in a short amount of time. So let's dive into the stats. So in the month of August, I ended up reading ten books, which totaled the pages of three thousand six hundred and eighty-one. Ten books is the most books that I've read a month like the whole year so really really excited to say that I did really well this month. Moving forward I don't think I'm going to keep up the 10 books a month pace but the format I read were really really different so I'll jump straight into that one. I ended up reading one ebook, two graphic novels, three audiobooks and four physical books which one of those was an arc. And the genre breakup was one sci-fi, two contemporary and the rest were fantasy, so I read seven fantasy books. So in terms of genre, didn't really change it up this month, just dove into the genre that I really, really like, and I feel like I'm going to give myself a pass this month for reading different genres. In terms of audience for these books, one of the books that I read was a middle grade and all the rest were young adult. Now without further ado, we've got a lot of books to get through so let's just dive straight in. So starting with the book that I read prior to the readathon which I had to finish, which was Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This is the read rate review book pick for July, August and we will be having our live show on the 14th of September which will be coming up very, very soon. So if you would like to join us for the live show, all the details for that on our Twitter page, which I'll leave linked down below. And this story follows Elizabeth, who has grown up in one of the great libraries of Ostermere. And basically, she is training to be a warden to look after the books inside this library, which, if provoked, transform into grotesque monsters of ink and leather. She has grown up thinking all sorcerers are evil, and that is until she's kind of swept up in a conspiracy and she wants to save these great libraries. But in doing so, she has to kind of prove her innocence and team up with a sorcerer, which she's been told her whole life to absolutely hate and that they are evil. And the story goes from there. I gave this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I thought this was actually really, really incredible. And I'm surprised because our read rate review books are notoriously not very good. And I was pleasantly surprised. This is all I could want in a YA fantasy. It had magic, it had mystery, it was dangerous, it was a little bit romantic, and what I really really loved that it was surrounding books which I thought was absolutely fascinating. The plot in this book was fast paced. There was never a moment where I felt like bored or they wanted to skim and the characters I thought were fantastic. We had Elizabeth who I really really loved and she was just trying to get the truth out there and trying to save what she called home and then we had a little bit of a darker character Nathaniel who was cool as and then we had Silas who is a demon and it was just it was a really really cool read I listened to this one on audiobook and it was phenomenal I also like read along with it but I I really thought this was a good book the only downside on this one is that the ending yeah um, the last page kind of negated some of the book because I think YA authors have a way of trying to fix what they've done and not taking the sacrifices in books that need to be done and yeah I can't, I'm gonna stop there because I'm I'm getting into spoiler territory but 
I think the author kind of did a, like a cop out in the end. I can't wait to talk to everyone about this one on the 14th of September. Now that that book is out of the way, let's dive in to my Newt's Magical Readathon, starting with the subject, Care of Magical Creatures. I needed to read three books in order to pass this subject, and I read all three, starting with the acceptable level, which was read a book with a title that starts with the letter A. I ended up reading Aurora Rising by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff, and I gave this one a five out of five stars, so one of my first five star reads of the month. I really, really enjoyed it. Tyler is like a straight A student. He did everything he needed to to get in the best position possible to choose his squad. But then he kind of goes a little bit rogue and rescues a girl named Aurora. And he ends up missing the draft and gets a team of dysfunctional people. There's like a psychopath, a gearhead, a diplomat, his sister, his best friend. And it kind of goes from there. And this story was so so good. I love me and Amy and Jay sci-fi and this one did not disappoint. What I loved most about this was the characters, their banter, it was funny, the dialogue was so entertaining. There were times where I laughed out loud and it's very rare for me to laugh out loud in books. And it had that creepy vibe that Illuminate had at some point where like shit's going down and there's this like threat that I'm not going to tell you about and it was just so so good. I was creeped out, I was entertained. Amy and Jay's writing really really developed in this one. I was so so glad that they took risks with their writing. What I said about Sorcery of Thorns, what the author did on that one, Amy and Jay kind of learned from their previous mistakes in other books and they just they took risks with their writing which I really really appreciated and I thought they did a fantastic job. This series I think is going to be one of my favourites and I cannot wait to get the next book in this series coming out next year sometime but I liked the progression that I could see in Amy and Jay's writing. I liked the characters. I thought the plot was really fast paced and entertaining and I think there's a lot more to go. I think some characters were really like base level but I feel like we're just getting to know them in the end and going forward into the next book I think I think they're really going to carry those characters well and this is going to end up being one of my favourites. That's what I think. Loved it. First five star of the month and it was really, really good. Next, for Care of Magical Creatures, I had to do the Exceeds Expectation, which was read a book under 300 pages and I end up reading Teen Titans Raven by Cami Garcia. This is a new book in the DC Inc. series, which I am loving and I gave this one a four out of five stars. So really, really good. It follows a girl named Raven who was in a car accident with her foster mother. Her foster mother died and she kind of loses her memory. From there she relocates to New Orleans but then some impossible things start happening and the story goes from there. I really, really enjoyed this. I think the DC Inc. series of giving us origin stories is a great idea and I'm really, really loving them. The artwork is fantastic with pops of purple which I really, really appreciated and I really, really liked the characters. What I didn't like though was the person who's supposed to be evil in this story. I never felt scared or I never got that presence that he was actually a threat which I thought was a really big missed opportunity because I feel like you knew everything was going to be okay. That's just really really disappointing from a reader perspective that I think the antagonist could have been further developed. Other than that I really really liked it. I think these graphic novels are really easy to read and they're really fun and I can't wait to continue with the DC Inc. series and I would like to see more of Raven specifically because I thought she was really really cool and it was kind of like a self-discovering moment for her and I think more can be done with that so I'd like to read more of that. Next up for The Outstanding I had to read a book with a bird on the cover and I read King of Scars by Lee Bardugo and I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars. A quite a disappointing four actually which is surprising and I cannot really tell you much about this one because it spoils the other series so I'm not going to go into details. If you've read the other series you know what this one's about. I love Lee Bardugo's work but King of Scars just missed the mark for me. What I loved about King of Scars was of course the characters and the world. Everything's built so fantastic and I loved these characters. We get to see Nikolai again, we get to see Nina again, we get to see Zoya again. These characters in this world is something that I can really really support. I've read all of Lee Bardugo's other work. This had the premise to be fantastic. It was a lot slower than the other books which is fine by me. I love just those little character moments that we really really needed. But then the ending came. All I've got to say to that ending was fuck off. That was ridiculous and I hated the ending. What I hate and what's my kind of gripe with Sorcery of Thorns as well, but it's a little bit different in this one because this story negated a whole fucking series. Like the whole series was just like, what was the point? And then this book got released and reversed it and I am just livid. I didn't think I'd be this angry about it and 
But when I, as soon as I put that book down, I was like, what the actual F? And what's the point? Honestly, what is the point of writing a book when you can just re reverse it in another series? I just don't understand it. Or I hate it. And I'm getting really passionate about it because of how good I think this could have been. How good Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom was, this could have been at that level. I feel like this is spoiler territory, but I'm I'm still angry about it and that's why I got a star knocked off immediately. It's lucky it didn't get more stars knocked off, honestly. Next up, we had to do charms. Now, I had to pass two of the three charms, but I ended up passing all three, which is fantastic. So let's dive in. The first one was the acceptable and I had to read a book with a gorgeous cover, but I used the Confundus charm and ended up reading Spellslinger by Sebastian de Castell. This is the group book for the readathon and I felt okay about it. I gave it a three out of five stars and this story follows Callan who wants to become a mage. In order to do that though he has to follow four mages tests and unfortunately he has no magic. He cannot break his bands so he's kind of going magic is a con game route and trying to win by cheating but that goes a little bit wrong and the story follows on from there. I don't want to spoil too much about it. This probably was my second least favorite book of the month it was a struggle i listened to an audiobook so this history with me and spellslinger is i tried to read spellslinger uh maybe two years ago and i got about 20 pages in and was like nope i've kept it on my shelves because i thought maybe it just wasn't the right time and i went back to it now and i also listened to the audiobook so thought because i thought that might help and it was just okay like it didn't blow my mind i think there is a lot that this book could have been it really, really dragged for me. The first half was really, really hard to get into and I couldn't find myself really hooking to the characters. The narrator was good, except he did like voices for some of the characters, which I hated. I absolutely hated some of his voices, especially for this chick, Various Parfax. I thought that voice that the audiobook person put on was awful. It was a lot to like, don't get me wrong. There were some side characters that I thought were fantastic, like um, this like cat looking thing. But it was just... It wasn't that great and I found myself more disappointed in the main character. I just thought when he, when they finally gave him potential they took it right back off him and I thought he could have been more and he just wasn't. I like the idea of this book but I just don't necessarily like the execution. I just don't think it's for me. Like I, I don't think this is a universal thing because I know Jay from J.D. Reed loves it. I know Bunny loves this. But maybe this one's just not for me. I, yeah, I didn't like the excess bullying that went on. I didn't like the parental abuse just, I hated it. I hated it so much. And I just thought there were a lot of antagonists for the sake of making this guy's like ride harder. And I just didn't like it. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. I'm probably not going to follow on with the series, but like it was okay. Moving on to exceeds expectations for charms. It was a comic graphic novel, things like that. And I chose to read Heartstopper Volume 2 by Alice Oseman, which is a big step up. This is a five out of five stars for me. This was fantastic. I love Heartstopper. It's a story about two boys who meet, they become friends, they fall in love, and this is just continuing on their story, and I love it. Charlie and Nick are fantastic characters. I like the artwork isn't beautiful, but I think it really, really matches the story, and it gives it a real rustic vibe. It gives it a real light vibe, and I think it really goes well with the dialogue, and it's just a cute boy meets boy romance and I just adore it so so much. When I read books like this it just makes me happy and that's all I can really say. It's like a coming of age story and people trying to work out who they are and like what they identify as and oh, I just so good so so good. Five out of five stars love it. Want more of Heartstop immediately. Moving on to Outstanding for Charms. This charm is Spongify and it has to be a paperback book. I ended up reading Shuri Volume 1 The Search for Black Panther by Nettie Okorafor. And I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This story follows Shuri where her brother has disappeared. She's got to kind of either take on the mantle of Black Panther or go find him. And I thought it was really, really good. I loved the artwork in this one. It was fantastic. I think it was beautiful. I loved following our main character Shuri. And I cannot wait to see where this series goes. It's definitely one that I would like to continue. What I did think detracted from this story was adding in characters from other series. I feel like you can either make a book or break a book with some cameos, right? Ca the cameos of different characters were put in here so much that it really took away from what could have been Shuri's story by herself rather than Shuri and Iron Man and the Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, they, you didn't need those extra characters in there for her to shine as a character. Still going to continue this one. I think it's got a lot of growth to be done, though. Next up, we have Herbology, and I had to finish two of the three prompts here, and I ended up finishing both of those that I needed to do. 
starting with The Acceptable, which was listened to an audiobook, and I listened to The House of Hades by Rick Riordan. This is the fourth book in the Heroes of Olympus series, which I really, really love, and I'm not going to give you a synopsis because it is the fourth book. The first book follows a guy named Jason who turns up on a bus holding a girl's hand with some friends that he has no idea who they are. And it goes from there, monsters attack, he goes to Camp Half-Blood and then the story progresses. We're on to the fourth one. We are loving it. This I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This is one of my favourite new series. I listened to this one on audiobook and I love th that way of reading it. I think it's fantastic. It's fast paced. I love the stakes get higher and higher and I love that you can see Rick Riordan's writing develop. I just, I just love it. The characters are fantastic. There's a lot of characters though, like don't get me wrong. There is a lot of characters but I think all of them are fully fleshed out and I think all of them dynamics are fantastic and I think they offer a lot to the story. There's nothing that I don't like about this book other than the fact that it kind of does follows the same formula as the other books which is why it always gets marked down half a percent because I can see where it's going to go. Like it, it literally follows the same formula but there, everything else I think about these books are perfect and I cannot wait to read the last one which is The Blood of Olympus in September. Next up for Exceeds Expectation I had to read a book between 350 and 390 pages and I got an ebook for this one which is Bloom by Kevin Panetta and I gave this one a 5 out of 5 stars. This book was fantastic. It was another graphic novel. It was kind of like a last minute decision to get this one because I needed to finish this prompt to become a magic zoologist and I'm so so glad I did because Bloom is kind of like another male male romance story but it was so good. And if I was a boy named Ari who now after high school is finished he kind of wants to move to follow his dreams of being a musician but he has to kind of try to convince his dad to let him quit the family bakery which is struggling. While like Ari is doing interviews to try to get someone to replace him, he meets a guy named Hector who is easygoing and just loves baking. And as they kind of become closer and closer, like doing the bakery thing, uh, something starts to bloom. Did you see what they did there in the synopsis? Bloom. Get it? <laughs> and this one was really, really good. I loved that it wasn't just boy meets boy and then like that's it. It had so much more to the story. It had family and it was about connection and it was about growth and learning who you are and oh so good I really really loved it. I think the character Ari really really developed at the start he was bloody annoying but I really really ended up liking him in the end and I just thought this was a really really cute book it was five stars I, it made me happy and I would like to get a copy of it so I can put it on my shelf because I like my favorites on my shelf and not on ebook and yeah Really, really good. And last but not least, the last book I read was for Transfiguration and for The Acceptable Level, which was read a book with LGBTQIA plus representation. And I decided to read Monuments by Will Kostakis, which was a book that was provided to me by Hashtag Australia. So thank you very much, Hashtag Australia, for providing this one to me for an honest review. And this follows 16 year old Connor, who just got friend divorced. His best friend has decided he doesn't want to be friends with him anymore. And he basically is trying to break the rules, which his ex best friend said he never liked to do. So he skips class and finds himself in a secret chamber under his school. There he meets a girl named Sally Rogers and things take an unexpected turn when it turns out that there is an ancient being under his school. And they kind of have an adventure from there. This was kind of a quirky urban fantasy filled with diversity and representation and it was like okay. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars in the end. It didn't blow my mind. The premise is fantastic. I love the idea of the monuments being massive statues that are also like kind of like gods and it's also written by an Australian author which I really really appreciate and I really really wanted to support. I think it's really important for people to see themselves in books and young Australians reading this book will see Sydney and be able to see places that they know because there are honestly not a lot of books that are set in Australia that kids can read and go oh like yes, I've been there or I can go there or that's near my house. Um, so I really, really loved that aspect of it. But I think what was a downfall is from me. This is targeted at young adults. It's targeted at a, six, a 16 year old boy is the main character. I'm nowhere near that age group and it felt young when I was reading it and I just couldn't connect with the characters, with their decisions, their reactions to things didn't make sense. They're kind of like these unbelievable things happened and everyone was like, oh yeah, normal, N not normal. The plot was fast paced and I loved the twists and I loved the turns. I was like surprised at where this story went, but unfortunately it just wasn't for me. It was, I, it was three, it was good. I think it had some really, really deep topics, but shown in kind of a bright light for young readers, which I loved, but this just n is not for me. If like you're a younger reader, this one, like is definitely a unique one that I'd recommend but it's just not my cup of tea. And that is it for me today guys. That's my notes and my August wrap up and I hope you enjoyed. I read a lot of books this month and 
I really enjoyed them. There were a lot of my backlist that I got out of the way, like Spell Slinger, like King of Scars, ones that I've been wanting to read but hadn't got to yet, and a lot of new releases, which I also really enjoyed. Ultimately, it was a good reading month. I, everything was three and up, although some could probably have been dropped to a two. Um, but that is it for me today, guys. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you like to see more and have not already, and chat to me down in the comments. Let me know what you read in the month of August if you participated in the notes. Let me know. Let me know if you achieved your goal. I officially passed my Mad Zoologist career path, and I'm so, so excited about that. G had a fantastic readathon, so thank you so much to G for making this happen. I loved participating. If you want to check out any of my videos throughout the notes, I will leave them all down below and up above. They would have come up like throughout this video. Um, there's my Hufflepuff reading guide, which has a lot of recommendations. There is my reading vlog for week one. Week two, week three hasn't gone up because I haven't finished filming it. It was it, The last week was a mess, basically. Um, and you can also see my TBR if you wanted to see what I was supposed to read because some of my options did change. But that is it for me today, guys. I make videos every Monday and Thursday, and I'll see you in a new one. Bye.